Hello everyone. Mark 2 7. It's a verse where Trinitarians lamely, I must say, uh, try to say they have evidence that Jesus is God. And it's where the Pharisees say to Jesus, or about Jesus, Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And so Trinitarians conclude that since Jesus forgave this paralyzed man his sins, he must therefore be God. The ironically funny thing about this passage is that they're proven that idea to be wrong. Basically, Trinitarians are presuming that this charge made by the Pharisees is right. And the entire point of the account is where Jesus proves them to be wrong. So, once you see that, you really see how ridiculous the Trinitarian claim is concerning this passage. So what happened in this passage? Um, some people brought a paralyzed guy. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Matthew or Mark 2, 6. But some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning, conspiring, basically, in their hearts. Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus, at that point, decides he's going to prove them wrong. And proving them wrong, he's also proven the Trinitarians wrong. Here's what happens. He says, or it says, Immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, Why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier? to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. You see Jesus' point here? Which one of those things is easier to do? To simply say your sins are forgiven to someone, or to heal a paralyzed man, and get him to get up, pick up his pallet, and walk. Which one of those two things is easier to do? Very obvious in the context that the easier thing to do is to say, your sins are forgiven. But to make a paralyzed man get up, pick up his pallet, and walk, much harder. And so he says that. Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk? Okay, everybody knows which one's tougher. But so that you might know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. In other words, so that you might know that I have this authority to forgive sins, I'm going to prove it to you. Notice also that he says, Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet, and go home. He proved they were wrong by doing the tougher thing. He had authority to do this. And the paralytic got up and immediately picked up the pallet, went out in the sight of everyone, so that they were all amazed. All the people watching were amazed, were glorifying God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Why would they say that? If that was God, why would they say that? It's interesting because in the parallel account, the exact same account in Matthew, here's what it says. Which is easier to say? Matthew 9. Your sins are forgiven, or to say get up and walk. Okay, It's easier to say your sins are forgiven. It's harder to make that man get up and walk. But so that you may know, that the Son of Man 
has authority on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the paralytic, get up, pick up your bed and go home. And he got up and went home. And here's Matthew's comment on this. But when the crowds saw this, they were awestruck and glorified God who had given such authority to men. God had given such authority to men. In other words, God gave this authority to Jesus. It wasn't Jesus' inherent right to do this. God gave him this authority. Where did he give him that? When he anointed him at the Jordan. Just read Luke 4.18 and following. God anointed him to do these things. He was doing works in his Father's name. He was doing works in his Father's name. He testifies to that. This authority to forgive sins had been given to men. And when Jesus rose from the dead, what did he say to his disciples? He gave him authority in the same way. In John 20, 21 and 22, he breathed the Spirit into them, received the Holy Spirit. And then he said to them, if you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they're retained. See that? Authority given to men. Jesus was now in charge when God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And Jesus gave that authority to Peter and his apostles. And how did they do that? How did they forgive sins in Jesus' name now? Well, we see in Acts 2, they baptized in Jesus' name for the forgiveness of sins. See that? The Pharisees were wrong. The Trinitarians are siding with the guys who were wrong. And Jesus proved them wrong. He proved them wrong by doing the greater sign. The lesser sign was, your sins are forgiven. The greater and more difficult thing to do was to heal this paralyzed man, make him get up and pick up his pallet and walk and go home. And Jesus is saying to them, to prove to you that I have authority to forgive sins, I'm going to do the more difficult thing. And if I do the more difficult thing, that should prove to you that I have the authority to forgive sins, right? That's what he's saying, isn't it? To prove that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. I'm going to do this. And so he proved them wrong. And he proves those who side with the Pharisees wrong too. He proves the Trinitarians wrong. God had given the Son of Man this authority. God had given such authority to men. God had for given this authority to Jesus, the, the Son of Man, to forgive sins on earth. Very clear when you just read it carefully. There's, I think there's actually three accounts, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you might actually want to compare all three. They're parallel accounts, same account, just told a little bit differently. So, you see the irony here? That, you know... They're, Trinitarians are using this verse to try to prove Jesus is God by saying he has to be God to for, forgive sins and Jesus is proving that this idea is wrong. God had given that authority to men. It was wrong to say only God can forgive sins or who can forgive sins but God alone. And Matthew says so. God had forgiven this authority to forgive sins to men, Matthew 9, 8. Very clear, very plain, very simple. And again, we see the twisted web of Trinitarianism, a web of tangled lies. God bless you.